While we were hanging out at Get Tough or Die Farm, aka my mom's house, we were treated to a wonderful thing. We were all hanging out in the backyard, uh, the garden, beautiful warm Sacramento evening, and my mom brings out this spectacular dessert. It was frozen, it was fresh, it had this beautiful burst of like wonderful summertime flavor, and it was watermelon granitas, which is a shaved ice dessert made with fresh watermelon. It was absolutely wonderful. We loved it so much that we had it not once, but twice. Our, our minds were blown as well when we learned how easy it is to make. This is a frozen dessert, but you don't need an ice cream maker, which is wonderful news if you're not as blessed as we are in the equipment department. All you need is a blender and a nice shallow pan, and you're in business. And what a sweet, icy business it is. Watermelons are indigenous to Africa, where they were an important source of, believe it or not, water. Or so the Watermelon Advisory Board would have us believe. Watermelons are now the most popularly consumed melon in the United States, and they're a lot more than a refreshing and delicious summertime staple. They pack a nutritional punch that you might not expect for a fruit that is actually 92% water. They're a great source of vitamin C, A, B1, B6, and a quite respectable source of the popular antioxidant lycopene. The same one that you may remember from tomatoes and all that stuff. It's super good for you, it has anti-cancer properties, and watermelon, since it's got so much water in it, you can eat a bunch of it and, you know, you're just gonna get hydrated. So it's a pretty guilt-free pleasure for the summer months. For watermelon granitas, you will need four cups fresh watermelon, the juice of one, one. <laughs> one cat. One cat, 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 cat. For watermelon granitas, you will need four cups fresh watermelon, the juice of one lime, pinch of sea salt, and agave syrup to taste, about one or two tablespoons. I'm washing off my watermelon because another thing the watermelon advisory board let me know is that you should wash them off to reduce your chance of exposing yourself to foodborne illness from bacteria when you slice into them, thus bringing the inside into contact with the outside with your knife. I have here my lovingly hand-picked and well-washed watermelon, and the first thing that I'm going to do to get started with all this business is cut it open. I'm going to cut it open with my trusty cleaver, like so, with grace and beauty and pretty juicy joy. Look at that. Good stuff. So at this point, I'm just going to cut it up into chunks and de-seed it. I'm sure there's all kinds of sane and efficient ways to go about it, but um, I'm just gonna start hacking away and see what happens. This is one of my favorite fruits. It smells so good. It smells like summer and happiness. So I'm just going to take big chunks of it out like this, put them into my bowl. So as you can see here, the seeds aren't that big. I got a seeded watermelon, but you know, they're so kind of small and underdeveloped. I'm not really worried about leaving them in or not, so I'm not being as diligent about picking them out as I might be if they were a little bit harder, more fully established, but this seems like a semi-seedless watermelon almost, some kind of hybrid. Not totally one or the other, but all delicious. Here we have our about four cups of watermelon meat, and now is another embarrassingly easy recipe time. What I'm going to do is just dump it all into my totally conventional, non-fancy, super high-speed blender that I dug out of the back of the cupboard. So, the watermelon. My lime. Pinch of sea salt. And agave. Specific amount of agave. I'm just going to put in a little bit and then taste it to see where we end up. I would say we'll probably end up using maybe a tablespoon, maybe two, depending on how sweet the watermelon is. As the season rolls on, they're just going to get 
you know, tastier and more sugary as they soak up that goodness from the sun. So this is going to vary in how much you want to sweeten it. And also it's really up to your taste. You could not sweeten it at all and just let the watermelon be itself, let it shine. And that's all there is to it. You have your mixture right here. If you're a real freak about texture and you just don't want any, you know, CD matter in it for sure, you could strain it if you wanted to go that way. Otherwise, you're ready to go ahead and pour it into your shallow pan that you have waiting and freeze it up. Or drink some. Oh man, that's good. You're going to take your mixture and just pour it into a waiting shallow pan, like so. And the reason that we're doing this is the difference between a granita and a sorbet. It's the size of the ice crystals in question. In a granita, you want them to be nice and big. So we're freezing it just straight up in this pan. You're going to want to stir it from time to time to kind of keep breaking them up, keep breaking them up and that's going to give you the granita-like texture. If we took this same mixture and processed it in an ice cream maker, you would have watermelon sorbet, with, which has little tiny crystals and a very smooth texture. And this is going to become granitas, and so it's going to have a little bit more kind of like spiky, icy, fresh texture to it. And so now that you have it right here, you're just going to take it and put it right into your freezer, like so, very carefully. Through the magic of the interweb, we have a finished batch right here. As you can see, it, the texture has changed markedly and even the container that it's in has changed. This is our finished granita mixture. Now we're ready to just shave it up and put it into the serving cup of choice and commence the enjoyment. Mm, Melanie perfection. Here we have our beautiful granitas, which has somehow lost its garnish. I can't be eating something with no garnish. People will think we're savages. That's better. Mmm, Melanie perfection with garnish. So here we have our finished granita. As you can see, it is absolutely beautiful and as I'm smelling, it's absolutely beautiful in aroma as well. It has wonderful, wonderful flavor going for it. It's, it's icy, it's frosty. There's nothing that really cools you out like watermelon when it's super hot. And there's nothing that, you know, chills you out like ice as well. And bringing them together is sheer genius. Here it is garnished with a little bit of basil, which is adding a beautiful aromatic component as well as a decorative element. You may choose to garnish yours with mint, and if you do, maybe you want to give it a little muddle, muddle it on in for an interesting flavor combination. We couldn't resist tossing some of the mixture into our ice cream maker, and you know, it turned out like this. Here we have some beautiful watermelon sorbet, and as you can see, the, the crystals are much smaller and the texture is considerably different as well. So we've got this right here, and mm. It's pretty good too. Can't really go wrong with watermelon. And with a recipe this simple, there's no excuse not to take it for a spin. Your friends will love it, your family will thank you, and you'll know that you're giving them something that tastes wonderful and is a healthy treat. Mmm, frosty. We'd like to know more about you. When you have a minute, please fill out our survey in today's blog post. Thanks, everyone.